Season 9 introduced many quality of life changes to the game, as well as reintroducing the beloved Flameheart, but the thing we've all been loving is the new World Events difficulty tuning, paired with the new Harpoon changes. So I thought I would test every single World Event as a solo player to gauge just how difficult each event is to complete now as a solo. My aim is to find out which one is the new king of fast gold in Sea of Thieves, so stick around to find out which is the best World Event to do now. All data in this video was tested on my streams on Twitch, as well as value data taken from the Sea of Thieves wiki to confirm my findings were legit. Swing by my stream sometime and learn some new tips and tricks in the game. Unless specified otherwise, all gold values are generated on the basis of selling with a grade 5 Reaper's Bones emissary and does not include any sailing times or server hopping times. After making his unexpectedly peaceful return, I think it's only fair that the first world event we discuss is about the one true king, Flameheart. Now, sadly, there's not much to report on since the new world event tuning didn't affect the difficulty of this event at all. The ships still have the same amount of health, and due to that, it will still take the same amount of time as it used to. This is about 15 to 20 minutes to complete and load the loot onto your ship. You will just about achieve a grade 5 in the Reaper's Bones, earning you about 130,000 gold, while taking about 15 minutes to sell as a solo player with no harpoon rowboat to speed the process up and no treasure chests. So if we average this out to about 30 minutes per event, that's about 260,000 gold per hour in just completion and selling time. I would give this event a difficulty rating of easy to medium, since it depends on how you position your ship, but good positioning and patience will result in this being quick and easy. Previously, one of the biggest waste of time and the least effective way of earning gold, we have the Skull Forts. However, since the Season 9 event tuning, Skull Forts are now arguably one of the fastest ways to get gold in a short span of time time outside of the sea forts, taking about 8 minutes to solo, 2 minutes to load the loot, and about 5 minutes to sell everything, you'll be completing these in 20 minutes without sailing time, making an average of 80,000 gold. If we multiply this by 3, then solely in completion time itself, you can earn roughly 240,000 gold per hour. I would give this event a difficulty rating of easy. This is because the skeletons are all very low HP as a solo player, being able to be one shot by a flintlock or one sword combo, one sword or dash, this will make waves super quick to go through. The only issues you may run into are gold skeletons spawning far from water and just being super slow to kill. One of the main features of this update was the brand new Chest of Fortune, only acquired through completing a Fort of Fortune, so I think it's only fitting that we discuss this event next. Completing this event solo will now only take you 10 to 15 minutes, and only 7 minutes to load the loot onto your boat, and a further 15 minutes to sell as a solo without a harpoon rowboat or treasure chest. And since the new chest of fortune sells for 50,000 gold with a grade 5 reapers, the total gold you earn from this event is now around 250,000 gold in total for 40 minutes of gameplay. But this can be brought down to 30 minutes with the use of treasure chests, blunder bombs, fire bombs, any time cutting method that you can find making this event about 500,000 gold per hour from just two Fort of Fortunes. Much like the Skull Forts, I would give this event a difficulty rating of easy. This is because the skeletons are all very low HP, being able to be one shot by a flintlock or one sword combo, sword dash, you, you, you get it by now. <laughs> I wasn't 100% able to deduce whether or not skeleton fleets were tuned from this update or not, but it appears that they may have been. They will take a solo about 15 to 20 minutes to complete and load all of the loot, as well as 10 minutes to sell with no harpoon rowboat. You will just about achieve a grade 5 reaper's bones from this event, and will be rewarded about 110,000 gold for 30 minutes of gameplay. So multiplying this by 2, you will receive about 220,000 gold for 1 hour's worth of work, as well as making progress towards your Order of Barnacle Gold Commendation and the Legend of the Sea of Thieves title and cannons. I would give this event a difficulty rating of medium to hard, since the ships are now less aggressive against solo players with reduced accuracy on their cannons and sniper skeletons, however they can still deal insane amounts of damage if your ship positioning isn't great. Now lastly on this list we have the greatest gold earner in the game, the Fort of the Damned. Come on, you knew it was coming. Completing this as a solo player will now only take you 7 minutes with 5 minutes to load the loot and 5 minutes to sell the loot. 
and in order to get the Fort of the Damned started up, you will need to get yourself a Skull of Destiny, which will only take you about 5 minutes anyway. So taking this into account, after about 25 minutes of gameplay, you will earn a grade 4 Reaper's Bones, and earn a minimum of 82,000 gold if you get the lowest possible selling values with only Sapphire Mermaid Gems and no Reaper's Bounties. However, this is super rare and very uncommon. In fact, this, as far as I'm aware, has never happened in the game. The maximum amount of gold you can earn is 203,000, with Ruby Gems and Reaper's Bounties mixed with the highest selling values. So if we average this out, being that you will have better luck than worse luck, which I find is usually the case, you will earn around 190,000 gold per 25 minutes, and if you manage to refine your method, this can be done in 20 minutes, meaning you can earn 570,000 gold per hour from this method as a solo player. This is unheard of. I would give this event a difficulty rating of medium, solely due to the fact that you must save the kegs from the skeletons in order to one-shot Grey Marrow at the end, as well as the event being a high-value target for PvP and loot steals. Other than that, the event is easy, and as long as you manage your sword dashes and save your kegs for Grey Marrow, you'll be all good and you'll complete this in no time. Well, there you go, guys. Those are all of the gold values, timings, and most profitable ways of taking out each of the world events since Season 9's changes. Let me know which methods you've been using, and if you're going to switch after watching this video in the comments, make sure to subscribe for all the best tips and tricks for Sea of Thieves. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and it would mean a lot to me if we can reach that milestone. Much love, guys. Take care.